Hello. Welcome to this tutorial on theoretical analysis of buck converter. In this video, we will see the theoretical aspects of buck converter, how it works, what are its switching states and certain design features. First, let's look at the circuit. So this one is the circuit of a buck converter. So we'll have a source and we'll have a load here and our objective is to reduce the voltage from the source to the load. For theoretical analysis, I'm using a switch which has two possible positions, position 1 and position 2. As it translates, now we have two switching positions, one where the switch is at position 1 and another one where the switch is at position 2. In the first switching state, when the switch is at position 1, the voltage input voltage is passing through uh, to the load through the inductor and the switch is in position 2 the inductor is the sole source that is supplying the load so this is how a buck converter looks let's look at in detail about the mathematical analysis so from the previous slide I have used the circuit for the first switching state so for this switching state, I'm writing a KVL. So this is uh, VG minus VT equal to VL. So from that KVL, we could find out the voltage of the inductor developed during this period. Now we know that uh, VL is L into DI by DT. From that, you can take that DL by DT is VG minus V divided by L, where VG is the input voltage and V is the output voltage. Going to the second switching state where the inductor is supplying the load, so VL is equal to minus V of T. You can write a KVL around it and you could find out VL is equal to minus V of T and again the same thing here. Now, I wish to know exact value of output for a given value of input. So, for that, we could use the small signal approximation. Then, from this small signal appro approximation, we could design the inductor. So, when the switch is on the duty cycle D, uh, the inductor voltage is Vg minus V and the, when the switch is off, uh, it is D prime Ts where Vl equal to minus V. During the on period, the inductor current builds up and during the off period, the inductor current drops down. So, as a result of it, if you have control over this duty cycle, you will be able to reduce the voltage from the source to the load and that how that's how the buck converter works. So from this, if I take this inductor uh, current alone, you will have a rising slope where where, uh, uh, where the slope is Vg minus V over L and the dropping slope where it is minus V over L. If you, if, uh, here you could average this over a single time period. So if, if it is the ripple is del IL, that will be equal to, for example, if I take a single uh, either the rising slope or a drooping slope, I am taking a single rising slope. So it is 2 times del IL equal to Vg minus V which is the row, which is the slope into the on period which is D into Ts. So from this you could find out the inductor. Here del suffix I suffix L is the current ripple. So this is how a buck converter works. Now this presentation, uh, this uh, file is used from uh, the book titled Fundamentals of Polytronics. Uh, authored by Robert W. Erickson. Now let's look at into the application note. So this is an application note uh, uh, regarding the basic calculation of buck converter's power stage uh, from Texas Instruments. So this is how the circuit looks. As you can see here I have a, uh, we have two switches in the previous case. Here these two switches are combined. Uh, one switch is just a, no a normal switch. It could be placed with some electronic switch. Another one is replaced with the diode. As you can see, both input and output has capacitors. Buck converter is a converter which induces ripples both on the input and on the output stage. So we need filtering capacitors. So we have C's here. Now for this, we can we have to choose uh, different things. So the ripple current that we have calculated is the same thing over here. In the inductor uh, selection, the same formula that we have used, it is V out into v, v in minus V out divided by del IL into Fs into V in. The only difference, we have used the time period T over here. Here it is the switching frequency Ts. So it is just the inverse of that. Then uh, we have equations for rectifier diode selection. 
output voltage sensing, input capacitor selection and output capacitor selection. This completes the theoretical analysis of a buck converter. Thank you for watching.